Hello and welcome to our latest Insider interview. Today in the studio, I have with me Mike Seidenberg, who is Fund Manager of the Allianz Technology Investment Trust. Mike, great to have you today. Great to be here. So Mike, you have a lot of exposure to the big US technology companies that have been immediate beneficiaries from a lot of excitement around the potential of artificial intelligence. NVIDIA is your top holding. It's had a very strong share price run since the start of 2023. So what are your thoughts on prospects for NVIDIA now? And what are your thoughts on its current valuation? Yeah, it's a great question. So NVIDIA has been a nice contributor for the trust over the past you know, year plus and change. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to note that um, as we sit here today, we are actually underweight the benchmark. Um, so while it, albeit a large absolute position from a relative perspective, uh, we're actually underweight the benchmark. I look at NVIDIA and I look at a company that is really doing a great job of capturing um, lots and lots of workloads in the emerging artificial intelligence sector. I, you know, I think I'd probably be more comfortable buying it um, if it were just uh, making it a larger position, if it were just a, a little more reasonable on the valuation side. Having said that, you know, the barriers to entry for N NVIDIA uh, for competitors are very, very difficult. Um, so I like their competitive positioning. I like what the company does. I think that the software aspect of their business is probably underappreciated by Wall Street. The stock is fairly richly valued, which is why currently, you know, we are underweight the benchmark. Given the opportunity, we would probably add to it, but, you know, we will take our time. Um, you know, here again, like most of our decisions, it all really boils down to risk reward for us. As you've just mentioned, you are underweight, you hold less than the index in a number of those US big technology companies. Is that a function of those companies just being too big in the index? Or is it down to the fact that you're finding better opportunities elsewhere? By the way, it's definitely the right question, you know, and, and it's been a huge headwind for us. And I'm very proud of the team and our ability to basically capture um, performance elsewhere. I think our underweight is really driven by a couple of things. A, you know, as we have a very active board that is very cognizant of single stock risk, I don't think we're ever going to be at some of the benchmark weights um, that are in the index. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure as the lead portfolio manager that I'd ever be comfortable at those weights. Therefore, our job really is to find companies that we think or that need to outperform these large benchmark weights. I'm not per se negative on the Magnificent Seven. Look, they've had an amazing run. And I think that generally speaking, they're really good businesses. Having said that, a lot of them to me look fairly valued, if not fully valued. I continue to look for opportunities elsewhere and we're finding those opportunities. We found a number of them in the back half of 2023, our process of something that we've kind of operated on um, since I've been with the trust, which is 2009. Our process usually leads us to finding opportunities that can replicate that type of uh, outperformance that we've seen with those names. In your last financial year, to the end of 2023, the trust was up over 40%, but you did slightly underperform your benchmark. Was that because of the fact that you're underweight, the Magnificent Seven? Well, look, I'm not going to make any excuses for our underperformance. I wish we had outperformed and our job is to outperform for our investors. So we did underperform modestly. Granted, the absolute performance was good, but nonetheless, it's not because of the Magnificent Seven. It's just that we as a team didn't outperform the benchmark for a variety of reasons, some of which are probably attributed to the Magnificent Seven doing phenomenally well. But I, I take accountability and I, you know, I, I don't want to use that as an excuse. And for investors considering exposure to technology, could you make the case for active management over an investor choosing an index fund or an ETF? Generally speaking, there is a rate of change with technology investing that is fairly steep. If I'm an individual investor, I think that the risk associated with an index really is that you get caught having a large position in a legacy business that may not be that may not perform as well as some other businesses. I think the bigger message here 
to me and for investors is get exposure to technology one, somehow, some way, because the sector just affords itself so much opportunity over time to really not only change businesses, but solve difficult problems, which should, if all, uh, all goes well, result in you know, technology doing well relative to other sectors here again with a multi-year time frame. So obviously, I'm biased and I believe in active management. I think over time, we've shown that active management is a good thing, but I really encourage investors one way, somehow, some way, get exposure to technology, if it, even if it isn't through the Allianz Technology Trust. Artificial intelligence is a key theme for the investment trust. Could you name some lesser known companies that are potentially going to benefit from that theme? A company like TSMC, which is a semiconductor manufacturer, when you read articles, it's not something that really bubbles up to the top. But if you think about the whole semiconductor food chain and how important that as that is to production of those chips, it's a really important food chain. I think about you know where along the food chain are the potential bottlenecks and what businesses can we own that really sit in that bottleneck that can create a lot of value for artificial intelligence chips. So it's not just a sole company that's really driving this market. There are beneficiaries that are basically first and second derivatives. TSMC is one of those, you know, leading edge production, leading edge semiconductor production is really important in that food chain. And over the past 18 months, on the back of technology's strong performance, could you name a company or two that you still have exposure to that has performed very well? We still own Meta. We we bought it well um, at the end of 2022. Good example of a company where we knew it well. We were able to own it through you know a very good phase. We were able to exit it during a more challenging phase. As we were doing some research, um, actually driven by Grassroots Research, which is an independent research organization that does a lot of survey work for us that we augment our process with, we saw that they were doing better versus TikTok. I looked at the valuation and realized they didn't have to do a lot of things right for people to care about the stock again. It allowed us to make it a fairly big position in the trust, and it's something that we've owned, we own today. During the pandemic, we trimmed the position, although we didn't sell enough, and then we bought it again when, when I just thought it was too cheap um, you know, at the beginning of 2023. You've been working and investing in technology for decades. Quite often, there's a lot of hype around certain technology sectors, and there's a lot of hype around artificial intelligence at the moment. So how do we know that the hype is real with this stock market theme? Wall Street tends to get too excited and too upset. And in between, there's a lot of opportunity. I think one thing I remind myself when I think about investing in technology is really to, to stay disciplined and remind yourself what is the risk reward associated with that opportunity. I think the hardest part of my job is really seeing a stock go up that really isn't a beneficiary. And in your example of artificial intelligence, there are lots of companies that are perceived beneficiaries that I really don't think are beneficiaries. So I need to stay disciplined. The team is disciplined. We have a process. Hopefully we'll continue to make good risk reward decisions despite the euphoria or you know depression about a given sector you know hopefully we can make good decisions and find companies that can basically appreciate um, and, and pass those results on to our investors and it's been a good period for the investment trust I mean I think in your last financial year you're up over 40 percent however the investment trust is still on a discount why do you think that is and what do you think needs to happen for that discount to narrow First of all, we have a really excellent board that really is cognizant of the relationship between the trust and the shareholders, making sure that we are active when needed regarding the discount when it gets, becomes too wide. From an operational perspective, I would love to tell you that's my area of expertise around trust discounts. At the end of the day, my job and the team's job is to deliver results. And I kind of have a core belief that if I re deliver results, or if we deliver results over time, the discount will probably take care of itself on a multi-year basis. And finally, do you personally invest in Allianz Technology Trust? So the answer here is a little bit complex. We are working on the ability to have me invest in the Allianz Technology Trust. Currently, I am prohibited due to some kind of kind of challenging esoteric U.S. investment rules around the manager. But it is my goal to be an investor in the trust. Mike, thank you very much for your time today. It's great being here. Appreciate the questions.
So that's it for our latest Insider interview. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please let us know what you think. You can like, comment, and for more videos, hit that subscribe button. And hopefully, I'll see you again next time.